Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker, and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today's topic is when hospitals issue debt. Now, I have talked on A Healthcare Z many times about incredibly boring topics, and once again, this might top them all, but it is super important. So let's dive into it. $145 billion in tax exempt bonds have been issued by hospitals and healthcare systems across America. Why do they have to raise all this money? Why do they have to sell bonds and then people essentially give them a loan and the hospital has to pay back the principal plus interest? Why do they do that? They raise money, they, the hospitals, raise money for construction. A lot of this money is actually now going to expensive IT projects like new medical record systems, etc., and also to expensive medical equipment. Now, there is incredibly high demand for hospital bonds. Why is that? They typically pay an average of a 5% effective yield. So they earn 5% interest. Now, if you looked at your savings account recently, it's probably less than 5% what you are earning there. So 5%, especially in today's world, is incredibly attractive. So investors are gobbling up these bonds like crazy. So there's high demand for these tax-exempt bonds. Now, effective yield just means that you have to add back some points to make it equivalent to what a taxable bond would be. So because these are tax exempt, they're very attractive. Okay, next up, this is a quote from the American, American Hospital Association, the AHA, about debt. I'm gonna read it here. So the ability to issue and support debt is not a nice to have capability. It is essential to the viability of nearly all U.S. hospitals and health systems. So here you have the trade association and lobbying group for hospitals in America specifically saying that debt is one of the central functions, abilities, and skills of a hospital system. Okay? It's not, again, it is not a nice to have. It is a have to have. Okay, so in order to understand something that is so vital to hospitals, we have to understand the bond rating system. Now, this is done by outside companies like Moody's and Fitch and Standard & Poor's. These companies got into a lot of trouble with how they were doing ratings for mortgages back during the mortgage crisis of 2008. But they not only rate mortgages, they also rate bonds in terms of how safe they are to invest in. And they use a variety of, of letters and numbers, but we're just going to use the ones from Moody's. A triple A bond is the safest bond, and so therefore it has the lowest interest rate, which is good for the hospital. So in other words, that's, that's cheap debt for the hospital to issue. Whereas the lowest rating is a B double A three, which is the riskiest bond. So the hospital then has to pay much higher levels of interest in order to attract people to buy those bonds because they're risky. Okay? So in other words, the better the rating, like AAA, the lower the interest rate, and the lower the rating, the higher the interest rate. And so in other words, those, those B triple, uh, AA threes are like junk bonds that you hear about, right? They're incredibly expensive for the hospital to issue. Okay, what determines, there's a variety of things that determines how a bond is rated, but one of the things is the hospital needs cash flow to service their debt. So it doesn't matter if it's a for-profit hospital or a not-for-profit hospital. The people, the creditors who are buying the debt, they're like, are you gonna be able to pay it back? And the only way that you're gonna be able to pay it back is if your organization generates cash flow, okay? So keep in mind that what that does then to the motivation of the hospital, it says, okay, well, what's our priority here? We've got a whole bunch of priorities. We've got priorities to our patients. We've got priorities to our employees. we got we got priorities to our creditors, right? We need to prioritize our creditors for creating cash flow. How do they do that? They increase prices. They, the hospitals increase prices. They increase the volume of patients coming through their hospital. They have aggressive collections techniques. I'm sure you've seen in the news about hospitals suing patients and garnishing their wages, okay? Because what happens is, is that if you specifically look at the ratio of cash flow to liabilities, for these triple A rated hospitals, it's 25%. Whereas for these junk bond hospitals, it's 8%. In other words, the better rated hospitals are generating about four times more cash flow compared to their liabilities compared to the junk ones. So having good cash flow 
at a hospital is paramount to being able to accomplish what the AHA says you need to accomplish. If you're going to be able to issue debt, pay debt now, issue debt in the future, you need to have good cash flow. Now, fine, that's all well and good, Dr. Bricker. But maybe this is just normal behavior for not-for-profit organizations. Maybe hospitals are not alone in functioning this way. Well, let's look at other huge nonprofit organizations that also have thousands or tens of thousands of employees. Let's look at university debt. Do universities issue debt? In fact, they do. But it's incredibly new. They only recently started doing this. And there is only 6.4 billion, I shouldn't say percent, there's only 6.4 billion of worldwide university debt. In the entire world, there's only 6.4 billion compared to the 145 billion of hospital debt, debt just in the United States. So apparently, universities have found a way to function for the community as a nonprofit institution without the huge sums of debt that hospitals have. Now, the final thing I just want to say is from the book of Proverbs. Some of you may be familiar with it. And it says in one of its verses, the borrower is servant to the lender. And that's what I wanted to share today. Thank you for watching A Healthcare Z.